Visionaire, Episode 2. Last we saw, Blaze, Trinity, and Arian teamed up and barely escaped capture by Matthias and his League of Ministers. Undeterred, Matthias forged onward with his men at any cost. Knowing time was of the essence, the three moved swiftly through the wreckage of abandoned buildings and villages in search of shelter before nightfall. As the sky darkened, their progress was slowed by the growing presence of the militia roaming the paths and streets, their eyes searching out any sign of movement nearby. Just as Trinity was about to round the corner of a large and rusted building, Blaze grabbed her by the back of her smock and pulled her back against the wall. The three held their breaths as two men with weathered rifles marched past. Blaze stared straight up to the stars, mouthing what could only be a short prayer out to the void. Trinity, however, had reached her limit. What the hell? Will you stop doing that? Stop doing what? Saving your life? Wouldn't have seen me, and so what if they did? It's not like we've been doing anything wrong. What could they do? Are you kidding me? We're breaking at least seven codes just standing here right now. Totally ignoring the building I was squatting in for the past week, the boundary we snuck across, and our total lack of tra traveler's visas. We're out well past curfew for a Sunday night. Sunday? Jesus Christ. It's the name of today's sun hours. Oh, that's weird. You two probably don't even have ID chips, do you? What's an ID chip? It's... You shut up. Now's not the time. Blaze puts his bag down and sinks down against the wall, covering his eyes with his hands and taking long, deep breaths as he sits. Arian looks over to Trinity, fidgeting with her bag. Even with the light fading, Trinity's embarrassment is easy to see. I'm sorry. Sorry? Well, sorry's not going to help us a lot right now. We're not far away, just a few jots further. You can't tell us exactly where you're going? You sure it's safe for all of us? It's safe. I know it is. Now, come on, we're losing light. Trinity peers around the corner, make sure to making sure the streets ahead is empty, then slips around and out of sight. Arion hesitates a moment, looking to Blaze for any kind of movement, then pushes past him to follow Trinity's lead. Blaze runs his hands through his hair, his eyes squeezed shut with a mixture of self-hatred and fear. He opens them and gets to his feet, heaving his bag back under his arm before cautiously following the others. At the same time, on the outside of the village, while our three weary travelers weave through the shadows in search of safety, Matthias and his men find themselves stuffed in their hunt just outside of the Euro villages. A line of militiamen stand tall and resolute, their weapons drawn and pointed at the group of robed figures protecting Matthias. While fear is thinly veiled in the eyes of the League of Ministers, Matthias' face is pitched with annoyance. A moment passes in this standstill before the militia's Militiamen's line parts in the center. Through this gap walks a tall woman, her dark face very faintly lined aside from the heavy draw of her brow. She strolls toward the league, her expression one of tired boredom, as the men part before her and move to hover just behind Matthias. Though somewhat taken aback, Matthias stands firm. Well, Prime Minister Cleo, to what do we owe this pleasure? Spare me the pleasantries, Mr. Patterson. I simply don't have the appetite for your antics tonight. Outraged, one of the ministers moved to approach Cleo, his hand reaching towards his tip. Every man behind the prime minister moved their guns pointly at him, taking a large, aggressive step forward. Matthias, his face flushed with barely contained rage, holds out into his minister and motions for him to fall back. You are far from home, Mr. Patterson. Too far for my taste. I'm sure you would recall your agreement with former Minister Sowery. It grieves me more than you know to be so far from the temple. The necessity deemed it so. This is but a short journey. As soon as I have what I am looking for, we will return home. You are on a hunt. A recovery. Two women were kidnapped in the night. We wish to see them safely home. Kidnapped, you say? Yes by a man slewing lies and blasphemy, raving about our village and- if you, if the women will return to you, you should go about your way without question. You have my word. Well, I could surely see to that. 
few moments later, darkness has fallen as our three weary travelers reach the edge of the buildings. In the dark, the stretch of empty land ahead seems endless as light flickers through the darkness somewhere in the distance. Blaze drops his bag and collapses on top, resting his head in his arms as he struggles to catch his breath. Arian, endlessly fascinated with the empty span ahead, stares out into the darkness, fixated on the light flashing ahead. Trinity, meanwhile, is lost in thought, her hands pressed against the wall of the building behind them. She runs them across the harsh and ruined metal sheet, pressing in odd places and furrowing her brow with concentration. So, is this it? Hmm? We're gonna crash here tonight? <laughs> I feel so much better now. Yeah, this was a great idea. I think the only safer place would be on the goddamn doorstep of the minister's house. What's the minister? Can you just know anything for once? Can you stop whining for two flipping seconds, please? Blaze, affronted, swivels on his bag towards Trinity, only to find that she has vanished. His anger dissolving into fear, Blaze jumps to his feet and moves to the spot she was standing. He places a hand against the wall as he peers around. Trinity? Trinity? Are you okay? Blaze waits a spell, holding his breath and straining his ears for any sound of movement, but only silence meets him. He exhales slowly, turning towards Arian with a look of dread, when a hand reaches out from a crevice in the wall and grabs Blaze around his shoulders, pulling him somehow past the barrier and inside. The arm pulls Blaze into the dim light of a cold, concrete-looking room and hurls him onto the floor. The force of impact knocks the wind out of him, and Blaze gasps for air as he tries to orient himself on the cool, hard floor. When the world comes back into focus, Blaze finds himself face-to-face -face with the barrel of a small, black metal handgun. Unable to tear his gaze from it, Blaze slowly raises his hands into the air. Trinity runs towards Blaze, but the woman holding the gun holds out an arm to stop her in her tracks. For God's sakes, Milo, I told you he's okay. He's with me. With you, is that right? From the compound? No, he's an outsider. Milo lowers her gun slightly to get a better look at the man cowering before her. Blaze tears his eyes from the gun to see a short but muscular woman before him. Her eyes, piercing, look strangely familiar to him. As she steps closer, he realizes where he has seen them before. Blaze, this is my sister, Milo. S sister, huh? I don't think I remember telling you you could bring a boyfriend along, Trin. He's not my boyfriend. <laughs> Milo lets out a harsh laugh, lowering her gun to her side and offering a hand out to Blaze. After a moment, he takes it and lets Milo hoist him up. She gives him a hearty slap on the back. <laughs> so, not your boyfriend. All the way out here. What's the story? Long ways away for a visit. Milo hears movement behind them and tenses, her gun at the ready, as she turns around to point it at the wall behind them. From the shadow, Arion emerges, clutching Blaze's bag tightly to her chest. Milo's eyes widen, and she slowly lowers her gun to her side again. Good to see you, Milo. Wait, you two know each other too? How? From the compound. What the fuck is she doing here? She's the whole reason I left in the first place. I had... Absolutely not. I knew you were stupid, but this is completely... I'm sorry, I didn't want to... Wait, wait, okay? Wait now, hold up. Can someone please tell me what the hell is going on here? What's going on here, Blaze, is that this is Arion, Lord Matthias's only daughter. The words simmer in silence as Blaze turns to look at Arion, a fresh horror painting his face. Back where we began, Matthias and his League of Ministers return to their village to find an unusual quiet has fallen on the night. The air cold and stale, Matthias quickened his pace towards the chapel as his ministers scattered to their surrounding tents. Soon, the silent air becomes fraught with cries and wails of anguish as each minister di discovers the same horror in each tent they enter. Death. The bodies of the... 
the bodies of their congregation lie in various states of despair, some appearing to have fought to escape, while others curl up, succumb to their fate. An enraged scream rings from the chapel, causing the ministers to run outside their tents in alarm. Matthias bursts from the chapel, a delicate woman draped in purple held limp in his arms. Her eyes, while open, are unseeing, fluorescent traces of green liquid trickling from her eyes. At once, the ministers throw themselves at his feet, their hands stretching outwards toward Matthias with reverence. Matthias looks down at the woman for a long while before laying her on the ground before the league. This, this evil, do you see what she has done, my brothers? Do you see the sin, the pure, unadulterated malice this abomination has brought to us? My lord. Too long have we allowed the people of this world to judge us, to torment us, and see what now it has come to. Make no mistake, my brothers, we will return here to face our death, and by the hands of those who claim we should entrust our lives, need you more proof than this? The ministers look to each other in horror, sorrow, and misery, etched clearly upon their faces. Matthias reaches into his robes and pulls a small silver canister out. He gives it a firm shake, then wrenches the top from it, igniting a small and flickering flame. He strides to the tent closest and lights the canvas on fire. The ministers jump to their feet in panic, but Matthias ignores their stammers and pleas as he sprints from tent to tent, casting a spark to each until they are surrounded by flames. He approaches the ministers once more, his face a mask of determination and madness. They have taken our sacred land, my brothers. It is now our creator has granted you a choice. Stay and give way to the slavery man has tried to entrap you in, or you can follow me and avenge his almighty and achieve the greatness he has always wanted for you. The ministers look to each other in shock, but then, one by one, throw back their robes and draw forth their weapons, strong and sturdy iron sabers. A malicious smile creeps upon Matthias's face as he turns from the men and leads them out from the flames and into the darkness of the night. Until next time.